What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Cruz. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use flat.io. This video is for my students that read in base clef. So first things first, you're going to want to go to flat.io, F-L-A-T dot I-O. Go to that on your web browser and sign up, um, preferably using your Gmail account or your MyMail. Any email address will work. Any email address will work. Um, now, the cool thing about using a Gmail or G Suite or Google email is that um, if you have a Google email and you start using flat.io, um, if I if I or any other music teacher decides to teach flat.io with Google Classroom, you're ready to go. Um, or if um, when it's ready and I'm able to integrate this with Schoology, you're already ready to go. You don't need to create another account. It's easy to implement using those kinds of learning management systems. So sign up on flat.io. Okay, assuming you've already signed up, a couple of things that you need. Um, you need this on document right here, flat.io advanced band bass clef. Uh, I have a high bass clef version and a low bass clef version. So for example, this is too high for tuba players. So um, you might want to get the bass clef low version, but I'm going to do it with this. Um, you can follow along and then I have a trick to turning this into um, bass clef low notes at the end of the video. So um, make sure you have this downloaded already. Once you're in flat.io, uh, it should look somewhat like this. I have the teacher's edition of it, so it's a little bit different. Um, but all you need to do is find my library. Okay. And then um, go to new score or new tab or new score, whatever it says. So um, I already have I already have another version up here of this one's for trouble clef, but I'm going to click on new score. I'm going to walk you through how to use flat.io. Let's name our score. Name it your name. Just put your name. So I'm going to put mine. I'm going to put mine. All right. And then um, hit continue. Afterwards, you're going to find your instruments. So I'm just going to do this for trombone um, because these notes right here fit very well for trombone. Uh, so I'm going to go to brass. And I'm going to click on trombone. And it gets added here to the right. You can add other instruments too. Like let's say you want to have like a trombone and tuba duet. You can add tuba or euphonium and whatnot. Okay, You can add as many instruments as you like. Here are the rest of the instruments. Here's your woodwind section, string section, percussion, mallet percussion, pianos, electric instruments. Okay, so we don't need all of those. You don't need all these things. So we're going to do this on trombone. Uh, tuba players, you're welcome to follow along because um, at the very end of the video, I'm going to show you how to transform all this into bass clef for your notes. And it'll be the same thing. Okay, so um, after I got my instrument up here, I'm going to hit create. Okay, so um, this is flat.io. Now, um, to teach you how to use flat.io, we're gonna um, we're gonna follow this list over here that I made. Okay, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna recreate this music that you already have. It's just a PDF file. Um, we're going to recreate this music using flat.io so that we give you the fundamentals and the foundation on how to use flat.io when you want to use this on your own. So um, let's see. Let's look at this first. This section right here, this one through eight, this is what I like to call a workflow, um, my workflow. So workflow is basically when you have an organization uh, to completing a task. So we want to complete this task of recreating this sheet music that I have here. Um, and we need to do that in a specific order. And this order is going to be here, one through eight. And hopefully by teaching you how all this stuff works, 
you can use flat.io on your own. Now this video is quite lengthy. So in the description below, I've added some timestamps. So if you kind of understand what to do and you're like, yeah, I don't need to listen to this part, go ahead and skip around and go to the parts where like, yeah, how to put a dynamic symbol in or how do I put articulations in? So you could forward, fast forward to that. Um, okay, so here's our workflow. We're gonna start with the key signature and the time signature and pitches and rhythm first. Um, and we're gonna recreate all this music and we're gonna put it in flat.io. Let's look at flat.io. We have, um, we have our toolbox menu up here, okay? Now, yours might look a little bit different depending on how uh, wide your computer monitor is. So um, these icons over here that I'm hovering over, these are your document tools. If you don't have that, you should have document tools like right around here next to the note tools. But because my browser, or my computer is wide enough, my monitor is wide enough, uh, the document tools show up over here. And your document tools are your undos, copy paste, saving, printing, zooming in, zooming out, and all that, okay? After your document tools, you have note tools. That's for your accidentals, note values, dotted notes, triplets. Um, let's see what else. Transposing, putting octave signs in there. What does this do? Oh, beaming suggestions. Okay, we're not gonna talk about that. Then you have your articulations. Okay, so your staccatos, tenuto, accent, marcados, fermatas, slurs, falls, breath marks, railroad tracks, ornaments such as trills, glissando, what else? Lots of other stuff that we're not going to talk about here. Dynamics, crescendo, diminuendo, and all your accent stuff here. Measure tools, how to insert a measure before and after, how to do a system break, meaning how to limit how many measures you put per line or per system. Clef tools, key signature, time signature, tempo, uh, swing. For those of you that are in jazz band, swing, this needs to be paid for. You need to buy a particular subscription to get the swing version. Rehearsal numbers, repeat signs, uh, DCL coda, DSL coda, all that stuff, repeats and all that. Okay, so um, that's, your, that's that. And then we have the text tool, which is adding in lyrics, chord symbols, chord diagrams of, let's say, you're a guitar player annotations let's say you want to have like specific things written in the music okay so that's flat.io another thing we need to be very careful about is over here you'll notice that um, underneath the staff is a teardrop um, icon or a teardrop cursor that's very important so if that teardrop cursor is not where it's supposed to be um, you know, you're going to be affecting when you put new notes in or articulations and stuff like that, you're going to be affecting the wrong spot of your music. So wherever you want to change, let's say you want to change notes or um, a rhythm, add a note, you got to make sure the cursor is in the right spot or else you're going to be affecting something else. And I, and I, I happen to fall into this problem myself. Um, I always make mistakes where this cursor is and I end up messing something up. Let's go to um, um, some basic computer skill stuff. You know, um, undo, to undo something, you can go to the document tools. Mine are already up here, but you can go to document tools and then you can hit undo if you make a mistake. So let's say you accidentally clicked on the wrong spot or you your cursor wasn't in the right space or right position uh, and you wanna undo that action, it's up here. It's kind of faded, but it's, um, it's a circle going counterclockwise. You can also hit undo by uh, doing command or Apple Z on a Mac or control Z on a PC or Chromebook. So those are some of the basics of flat.io. All right, so let's get started. We're in the very beginning of our song. We got to make sure that we have the correct key signature and time signature. So how do we change the time sig the sorry how do we change the key signature 
Okay. Well, you'll notice that by default, the key signature is no sharps, no flats. What you can do is you can click around here until a key signature dialog box shows up. There we go. Okay, it might take a couple of clicks, okay, until you find it. Okay, so it's right around here on the A line of the bass clef line. And we're going to change it to three flats. Okay, three flats. Um, and because it's trombone, it's already bass clef. If Let's say you wanted to change clefs, that's fine. You could do treble clef or trombone. Let's, those will be really high notes, but trombone reads in bass clef. So again, hover over the bass clef and click it, or hover over the, the, the key signature and click it and select the time uh, the key signature. Okay, so um, time signature, this 4-4. Four, four. Well, the sample song that you already have, the sample song that you already have is in 4-4 four, four time, so we really don't need to change it, but to change the time signature, again, hover your mouse over the 4-4 four, four time. All right, and then select the time signature that you want. Okay, so... Could change it to three four you can customize it okay um go back to four four how uh, another way to change your key signature and time signature is to go to the measure tool up here you can change the clef up here okay you can change the key signature up here and you can also change the time signature all right, so as long as our cursor, the teardrop, is right here on the measure that we're trying to change, you can you can change the clef, key signature, and time signature. So now that that all is all set, okay, three flats for our key signature, and we're in four four time. Let's start throwing in the pitches and the rhythms. Okay, again, our workflow is our organization system. We don't want to do everything at once because there's a tendency to forget. Okay. Um, so we're going to just do notes, pitches, and rhythm only, okay? And then after that's done, we'll go into these other, um, other things that we can add in. So let's get started. So first measure is a C whole note. I'm going to go to my note tools here, and this is where, we're going, this is where I'm going to spend most of the time. Note tools, okay? Click on whole note. And then I like to just pl uh, plug in or click the note into the staff. Okay, and um, I like to click the note into the staff. You can also press a letter on your computer keyboard. Uh, so, for example, in this next measure, you can see that the teardrop is moved over to the right one, one measure. I can press any note on my keyboard, and a note will show up. So let's put in a D. I'm going to press D on my computer keyboard. Okay. The next one is E flat. I'm going to go to... I'm, in, I'm under the note tools again. Click on the half note so I could put a half note E flat. Now, I don't have to put a flat sign next to it because the key signature already says that B flat, E flat, and A flat are going to be flatted already. After E flat is F, half note. Again, I'm in my note tools and I click half note because that's what I want to put. Next is G and A quarter notes. So I hit quarter note up here, G, then A. Now this is coming out as A flat because of the key signature. Three flats in your key signature means B flat, E flat, and A flat are flatted. That's going to be A flat. But how do we change this A flat to A natural? Make sure the teardrop is underneath the A, the A flat. You're in your note tools, and then click natural. And there you go. Now it's A natural, just like this note over here, A natural. Next, we want to affect beat three, so I'm going to set my mouse over, or the teardrop over here to beat three. That's what we're going to affect the next uh, change. Hit eighth note and put in a B natural. This needs to be B natural, so I'm going to use my arrow keys on my computer. Hit left so that the teardrop is underneath the B flat. I'm in my note tool section, click natural, and now that B flat becomes B natural. All right. We always need to keep in mind the key signature. After B natural is A natural. Oh, sorry, C. Now, I made a mistake there. Okay, I accidentally put 
um, it as an A. All right. Um, if I make a mistake, you can undo and click the note in again, or you can use your up and down arrows to adjust the note. Okay, so I was just pressing my up and down arrows on my computer keyboard to um, adjust the notes. After C is quarter note C. Now I want the quarter note C to be on beat four, so I'm gonna move my cursor, my teardrop over here, click on quarter note, and there's C on beat four. Okay, so that's the line, that's line one, already done. Next is measure five. We're gonna put 16th notes in. That's just C, B flat, A flat, and G. C, B flat, A flat, and G. All right, that's easy. The key signature is already three flats. B flat and A flat are already automatically lowered. After that, it's F and E flat eighth notes. And then quarter note D and C. So click quarter note here. Again, I'm under my note tool section. Okay, click quarter note, D and C. Okay. That takes care of measure five. Next is measure six. We have eighth note triplets. Okay, so how do we do that? First, click eighth note under your note select under your note tools. Click eighth note and put your first eighth note in. Next, you want to move that teardrop under the first eighth note. Go to the tuplet tool, which is this up here with the three and then click the three because it's a triplet for three. And now your measure is set up to have three eighth note triplets on beat one, okay? After C is D, after D is E flat, eighth note E flat, so my eighth note's already selected, and there's your eighth note triplet, okay? After E flat is quarter note F, after quarter note F is eighth note G, Okay, so I'm ready to put G on beat three, but I have to make sure it's an eighth note. After G is A and B natural, A natural and B natural, but they're 16th notes. A and B. So here I'm going to affect, I'm going to change this A flat to A natural. I select the A flat with the teardrop, make sure that, that, that that's there and hit natural. Move over to B flat, just press right on your keyboard, or, oops, just press to the right on your keyboard so that B flat is highlighted, okay, and the teardrop is under the B flat. Hit natural, and now you have B natural. Move my cursor over one more to the right so I can put a quarter note in, okay. All right, next. So if you look at my music here, this is two measures long. Okay, two measures long. The line two is only two measures long. I need to take this measure over here, measure seven, and put it in the next line below. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the first. Oops. I'm gonna put my cursor on the first quarter note. I'm gonna go to the measure tool, and I'm gonna go to system break. And that's going to push this measure, measure seven, into a new line or a new system. Okay, so now we have three systems of music. So in music, every line is called a system. Okay, three systems of music now. Now let's put the rest of the notes in. Measure seven, two sixteenth notes and an eighth note. Let's go to notes, sixteenths. Click 16th note, and let's start putting our 16th notes in C and B flat. 8th note, A flat. 16th note, G. 16th note, F. 8th note, E flat. Quarter note, D. And quarter note, C. Actually, that's supposed to be quarter note, B natural. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Um, move my teardrop to the left by using my arrow keys and then using my arrow key down, press down, it lowers it to B. But because of the key signature, B flat, okay, this needs to be B natural. 
Okay, so the B flat's already highlighted. The the teardrop cursor is underneath the B. And there's B natural. Okay. Next. Next measure. This measure right here needs to be in 3, 4 time. Okay, so I want to change this measure. So I select one of the rests here with the teardrop. Okay, if my teardrop was on a different measure, like let's say my teardrop is over here and I change the time signature, this measure will be changed. But because I want to affect the time signature of this measure, I'm going to move my teardrop over to this measure, measure 8. Okay, next we go to measure, time signature, 3, 4. And there you go. Now this measure right here is 3, 4 time. So let's start putting our notes in. Let's go to notes, click on eighth note, and let's put in a C. After C is an eighth rest, and after that's an eighth note D. So we are going to skip this eighth rest by moving our cursor over. Oops. Click eighth note again. And because we want to change this eighth note to a D, okay, our teardrop is right here, and we click D. All right, this is already an eighth rest, so same thing as this. D followed by eighth rest, then it's E flat. Here's D followed by eighth rest. We want the E flat to go here. So we're gonna move our cursor over and put the E flat in. And that is measure eight. All right. We are out of staffs or out of measures. So what do we do now? Okay, go to measure. Over here, click on insert measure after. So notice how the teardrop is over here on this measure. It's gonna start putting measures in to the right. Okay, now because the third system is only two measures long, okay, we wanna move this measure, measure nine, to the next line below. So I'm gonna set my teardrop into measure nine, and then I'm gonna press system break over here. Again, this is under measure tools, system break. And now, system number three is two measures long, just like this one right here in the PDF. Now we're at measure nine. In measure nine, we're gonna start putting in dotted eighth notes and dotted notes, okay, so here we go. Let's go to our note tools. Eighth note first, because it's a type of eighth note. I'm gonna put an F, F eighth note. To change that F eighth note into a dotted eighth note, move the teardrop over into the F. Under the notes tool, go to the dot selection and just, se just select single dot. Not double dots, single dot. Okay, and now you have a dotted eighth note F. Next, we want to go to our uh, add in a sixteenth note G. So move the cursor over, select sixteenth notes from the note tools, sixteenth notes, and G. Next is eighth note, dotted eighth note A. Okay, so again, this is coming out as A flat. All right, so select the A flat. Make sure that curse the teardrop cursor is underneath the A flat. Go to Note Tools and then hit Natural. And now it's A natural. But it's a dotted eighth note. So our A is highlighted. It's selected with the um, teardrop. And then click Dot. Now it's a dotted eighth note A natural. We want to put a B natural here. Okay, 16th note. Click the B into the staff. All right, now that's coming out as B flat because of the key signature. Highlight highlight the B flat. Click natural up here under note tools and now it's B natural. Next, we got to put in a quarter note C. Okay, and that takes care of that measure. The next measure over here, measure 10 is dotted quarter note followed by eighth note. So we got to put in a high D. We want this D to be a dotted quarter note, so I'm gonna move the teardrop underneath the D and press the dot. 
after the dotted eighth after the dotted quarter note D is C eighth note. So hit eighth note up here and click C. And then the last beat is B flat. Don't have to worry about an accidental because of the of the key signature. After B flat is A flat. Click the A flat in. Move the cursor under move the cursor under the A flat. Go to your dot tools and click dot. After A flat is G. Move the cursor over because this is where we want the G to go. Eighth note G. And then a quarter note F. Go click quarter note up here and F. This measure down here, we want to throw it down to the next system. Okay, so I'm going to select the first quarter note. It's already quarter rest. It's already selected. Go to measure tools and hit system break. And now measure 12 is down here. We need to add one more measure. So now we have measure 12 and measure 13. Go back to my note tools. E flat. Next note is a quarter note. D. And the last note's a quarter note C. Okay, so that is how we put in the pitches and the rhythms for this PDF. Okay, all the pitches and the rhythms are there. Um, next, repeat signs. Okay, now when you do your workflow, um, you have your very first when you uh, when you set up a new flat.io score or piece of sheet music. Uh, the first things you got to do is take care of the beginning, the key signature and time signature, and maybe the tempo. The tempo is up here. Um, that's easy to change. Um, after the key signature, time signature, and tempo, pitches and rhythms. That is what you're going to probably spend the most time on, pitches and rhythms. After pitches and rhythms, all this stuff down here, okay, you could, you could choose any which way um, you want to do that, okay, but... Um, as long as you're organized, you're not going to get lost in the workflow and how to put your music together. So next I have repeats. So how do we do repeats? We have a repeat here in the second system, okay, uh, between measures five and six. So if I, want, if I want my repeat to be at the front of measure five, I click the first note of measure five. There's my teardrop. It's in the front of measure five. Click on measure and then click on left repeat. Now something that's weird with flat.io is that put the repeat sign over here. I don't know why. It should be right after the key signature. Oh well. The next repeat sign, okay, is um, a backward repeat. So um, we want this to be right after the C, right here. So I'm going to select the C. Make sure the teardrop is right by the C. And then click on right repeat over here. And now we are right side, right facing repeat or backwards repeat is on measure five or measure six. Okay, so that's repeats. After repeats, we don't have any more. So after repeats is dynamic symbols. Okay, that's your forte and piano and mezzo piano. We have three that we're going to put in. So because I want, since I want my forte to be on the C, I make sure that my teardrop is there. Go to dynamic tools and then hit F for forte. And there you go. Measure five. Measure five is piano. So since I want a piano to go right here, a piano symbol to go here, I'm going to make sure that my teardrop goes here. As soon as my teardrop is there, I'm going to go to my dynamic tools and click piano. And piano is inserted. The first note of the three, four time is mezzo piano. So I'm going to move my teardrop cursor over here. Okay, so I just click on this C and I put in mezzo piano. Okay, and let's see, no more other dynamics, just those three. So we're done with that. Afterwards, we're going to put in our crescendos and diminuendos. Again, we're going to be in measure um, seven. We want our crescendo to start at the beginning of measure seven. So I'm going to click the first, the first note of measure seven. There's my teardrop. It's under the first note of measure seven. And this is a diminuendo. And then we're going to click diminuendo. This is under dynamics. Okay. 
and then um, there's your diminuendo. Now to adjust the length of a diminuendo, you'll notice that here is the diminuendo symbol, and then you have these little circles at the ends. Those are what those are handles. You click on those handles and you drag sideways, and you can adjust the length of the crescendo. We want it to go all the way to the bar line right here. Okay. Next, we have the three four time. There's a crescendo here in the three four time. So um, let's put it over here first. Okay. So I got my teardrop shape underneath the D here, and we're going to put in a crescendo again. This is under dynamic tools and hit crescendo. All right. Now we want it to look like this over here. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the crescendo handles. If I can do that. Okay. And then just drag it all the way to the mezzo piano. Okay. Now I want it to get a lot closer, but check this out. If I make it go over the mezzo piano and I let go, it it doesn't collide with the mezzo piano. Okay, so that's another cool thing about flat.io is there's no collision between any of the symbols or the um, or the signs that you have in your music. There's never any collisions. In other software, you gotta manually um, you gotta manually manually move stuff around so stuff doesn't collide with each other. All right, so that is the crescendo. Again, you got these um, circles. These are handles to adjust the length of the crescendo. All right, after crescendos and diminuendos, next we have articulation. Okay, articulation. Okay, go up, to, up here. Your articulation is going to be like your fermatas, breath marks, staccatos, accents. Okay. Um, in flat.io, it also includes your slurs. Okay, so we have to put a fermata here in measure one. So I'm going to make sure my teardrop shows up. My teardrop shows up in measure one. I'm going to press fermata. Okay. Measure two, we have a breath mark after the D whole note. So I'll make sure my um, teardrop is underneath the D here. And I'm going to click breath mark. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go to the third system, measure seven. We have staccatos here. So as long as the note is highlighted with the teardrop, uh, teardrop tool, you can add any articulation that you want. So these six notes, C, B flat, A flat, G, F, and E flat, that's all staccato. And what I'm going to do to move a little faster is I'm going to press right, the right arrow key on my computer keyboard to move the teardrop over to the next note and then hit staccato. Okay. The next two notes, the D and the B natural, those are accented. So I'm going to move my cursor over to the right and hit accent. Okay, that's how you add articulations and accents and stuff. Then la the last one is slurs. Slurs are probably the biggest pain in the butt in flat.io. Um, so if anybody from flat.io is watching this, um, the slur thing is kind of confusing because it's... Um, you're trying to adjust the slur, but then the the notes to add ledger lines and all that kind of stuff starts coming in, and it's it the program doesn't know if you want to adjust the slur or adjust a note on the staff. So we're going to try this. So measure three, the E flat and the F are slurred. Now by default, when you throw in a slur, it will you will by default flat will slur to the next note only. Okay, so I've got my slur ready for measure three e flat is selected i'm going to throw in the slur and there you go now e flat to f is um slurred i'm going to move my teardrop over to the next measure in measure four we want to slur this entire measure okay if i click the slur tool or the slur um option here it's going to slur the g to the a but if you notice the um the it, it slurs only up to the a natural so we need to adjust the slur again just like a crescendo or diminuendo mark uh, it has these handles 
you just got to click the circle on the handle and drag it to the note you want to slur to. Okay. And that was actually relatively easy. I don't know why that happened. Um, I was practicing this earlier with the previous video, and I could not get this slur to move over. But that's how you do it. Every slur and every uh, crescendo diminuendo has these circle handles here. Okay, and, it's, and you can move them left and right. You could slur the whole song, you could slur one note, two, three notes, a whole measure, and there's that. So maybe I take that back about the slurs being a pain in the butt, but um, I remember when I was rehearsing this and going through how I was going to make these videos, putting the slurs in was just just uh, frustrating. Okay, so this is, um, that's it. We went through my entire workflow, okay? And if you were able to follow everything I was doing, um, you, you're done, okay? Now, let's say you're a tuba player and you're like, man, I can't play these notes. These notes are way too high and I, I want to play these an octave lower. Okay, well, there's a way to do that. Um, what you want to do is you're going to need to highlight and select all of the notes. So maybe like right around here, okay, I'm going to click and start highlighting everything, the whole, all of, all the music I want to transpose. Okay, highlight all of that. Then you're going to go to your um, note tool. Now, because my monitor isn't wide enough, um, I have this part right here called display more. You might already have all of this showing up on your computer, but I, mine was under notes, display more, and more tools show up. And then you're going to want to find this icon right here. Uh, that's got a flat symbol, a note head, and a double-headed arrow pointing up and down to transpose. Click on that. A dialog box shows up, and we want to change. We want to change this down. We want to make all these notes one octave lower. So this is how you transpose. If let's say something is too high or too low, okay, this is how you transpose. Now, because we need just need to make this one octave lower for tuba players. Um, Interval unison quality of the uh, quality of the interval is perfect. We want to change it what by one octave going down. Okay, so now we have the parameters set to make everything go down one octave. All right, and then we click on apply transposition, and there you go. So now everything moved down one octave. All right, so I just did this for tuba players. Um, if they want to, if they want to adjust the notes, if like if you're following along in this video, um, so here are, this is the, these are the tuba notes. Now this is not what we want for trombone or baritone, so I'm gonna just hit undo. Undo is over here under the um, document tools, or to do a, a regular to do an undo, you can do Apple Z or Command Z on a Mac or control Z. So I'm just going to do that really quick. And then everything goes back to um, uh, as written on this page. Um, let's see. OK, now you do need to submit this to me. OK, you do need to submit this work to me. And um, and the best way to do that is electronically. So under your document tools, if they're already um, if they're not showing up here, just go to the documents tool. There's a document tool button right here next to notes. That'll bring up these icons. You can print your sheet music. You can print it to your printer. So for example, on a Mac, this dialog box appears and this will print to my printer at my house or you could save it as a PDF, or you could save it to Google Drive. Just make sure you put my email address and share it to me so I can view it. You could do that. Or you can click on this cloud with a down arrow on it and go to printable PDF. All right, you don't need to worry about these um, radio buttons here, these switches, and just hit export. And then down here below, is the file that's getting saved to my downloads so um, it looks like it's ready I can click this 
and there is my music okay it looks very similar to what I wrote here okay now I wrote all of this on a different program and this right here on the left side this is flat.io okay so that's how you save it that's how you print your work you can get that printable PDF file and email it to me or put it in Schoology for me to download um, or you could try doing it share through Google Drive it's it's totally okay um, so that's transposition that's saving and printing and then um, the last thing a couple more things to do on this is um, what you can do is you can play along to this stuff okay so if you're a trombone player um, and you want to act and this is like some actual music that you have in your band folder or your sheet music you can play along with this okay um, let me increase the volume really quick you can play along with this make sure that your cursor the teardrop is in the beginning and you can hit play uh. Okay, so you can play along with that. Let's say this was actual some actual music and you wanted to play along with it, but this is too fast. You can slow it down. Okay, um, make sure the note value is correct. Usually quarter note equals, all right, and hit save, and then you can play that on a slower tempo. Um, you can take sheet music from other songs. You can take um, notes from other songs or other sheet music, put that into flat.io, and you're like, you know what? I'm really confused how this goes. Um, you could plug the notes and the rhythms in to flat.io, and you can play it for yourself and hear how that's supposed to go. I actually taught myself a lot of rhythms by experimenting with music notation programs when I was younger. And then, um, let's see. The last thing we we're going to do, I think that's it. I can't remember what else what I was going to do next. Okay, so um, again, this is an assignment. Okay, you're going to want to save this and then send it to me. Um, I showed you two ways to do that. And um, this is flat.io. Have a lot of fun with it. Teach yourself some new rhythms, experiment with it. It's like, what does 64th notes sound like? You know, or um, there's a rhythm that I'm always that you're I'm always missing in class. Put it in and figure out what flat.io does. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So um, the playback, there are some limitations. It's a little bit robotic sounding. Uh, for example, this fermata over here, flat.io didn't observe the fermata before going on to the next note. Okay, so there's some limitations there. Um, and then staccatos, you know, sometimes the staccato is too short or too long. It's not the right style. But at least you get the idea of how to, um, how the rhythms work. So if you've never heard this rhythm before, you can set your cursor to this measure. You could set the teardrop to that measure and um, hear what this measure sounds like. Okay, so this is a great tool to learn to learn more rhythms and teach yourself how to play certain things that you've never really had um, success with until um, putting it in here. So that's flat.io. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you send me an email or a Schoology message. If you're not one of my students and you're like, hey, this is cool, and you have some questions, leave a comment below. Um, I know I understand that this video is really long. So um, feel free to fast forward to those sections that you just want to focus on. For example, dynamic symbols, you just want to focus on that. Fast forward to the timestamps that I have listed below in the description so that you can just focus on dynamics. Everything's here. Um, I hope not, I'm not forgetting anything. So yeah, this is an assignment. Please turn this in. Uh, take your time on it. Uh, don't try to do all of it at once. Do a little bits at a time so that you're not rushing and making a lot of mistakes. 
And then, um, sorry, one more last thing is uh, a lot of mistakes people, the, a lot of the mistakes people make with flat.io flat, flat is um, with the key signature. Some people aren't aware of key signatures and accidentals. Okay, so when you have things like that, when you're trying to copy music into flat.io, you got to make sure that it's exact. Okay, if it looks a little bit different, uh, you're you're going to learn something wrong. The computer is going to play what you put in. Okay, and everything, anything that you make a mistake with is actually your fault. Flat.io is just, it's, it's not a human. It's not going to predict what you want in advance. Um, and another thing that people make a big mistake with, with flat.io um, specifically is the, the, the teardrop cursor. If your teardrop cursor is not on the notes that you want to affect or change or the measures you want to change, you're going to start throwing in all sorts of symbols in the wrong spot. So make sure you're completely aware of, the, um, of where the teardrop symbol is. Okay. All right. So that's that. Good luck. Have a lot of fun with this program. Okay.